All right. Let's talk more Steelers. ESPN. Oh, gosh. It feels as if every time we talk about ESPN, never, it, ne- it, never, it never goes well. In their football power index rankings. Boom. Got it right. Took me like four times to get that one. Football power index rankings. They have the Pittsburgh Steelers. Just in an absolutely atrocious spot here. Absolutely atrocious. They currently sit 26. 26th to 26th. That is two spots ahead of the Jacksonville Jaguars. That is three spots below the Detroit Lions. Four spots below the New York Giants. It just, the list just keeps getting worse. I, On par I don't have with qu- the Carolina Panthers. Dude, I, I'm I'm telling you, if the Steelers and the Panthers have beaten the season, bro, they, they are going to beat the piss out of the Panthers. I'm telling you, man. I, I, I don't know what kind of computers they're using for this. Uh, I like I don't have a problem with the top four, to be honest. Like Bills, Packers, Rams, Chiefs, totally cool with me. Um, and I by no means expect the Steelers to be a playoff team next year. They, they could, but like if they missed the playoffs, I'm not like super duper shocked. Bro, no. like but two 26. spots above the Jaguars. Do, do yeah. you see Jacksonville? Yeah, I, I do. I do. So if this worked out the way it is, the Pittsburgh Steelers have the sixth pick in the NFL draft next season. There's a million things you could talk about around this, but the fact the sixth pick The sixth pick, seventh, whatever. I was around for the (laughs) Duck Hodges days, Donnie. I was around for the Delvin Devlin Duck Hodges days, okay? They did not have the seventh pick in the draft. They didn't even come close. And you're telling me that the Pittsburgh Steelers, with the first quarterback taken in the NFL draft, at bare minimum, two options to play at quarterback, a hopefully improved offensive line, which – the improvement you won nine games last season so if you're improving that should be the bare minimum starting line there probably a better defense and hopefully two veterans back on the defensive line and you're saying the seventh worst team in the nfl ah, just that just seems a yeah. little rough one spot above the seahawks who have drew lock starting at quarterback Noah, bro, you know i am not a trubisky guy you know i do not like mr trubisky but, like, we're going to sit here and act like the Steelers aren't just thrashing the Seahawks now that Russell Wilson is gone. That's what I, I just don't – I just don't – I don't see it. Like, this is twice now. This is twice in two days that I've seen the Steelers just like – and I think it's Kenny Pickett. I think it's the Kenny Pickett thing. It is Chris Sims ranked Kenny Pickett 39th out of 40 in the quarterbacks in the NFL, which was bonkers to me. Um, I believe that, yeah, I believe Drew Locke was the only quarterback behind him. Bro, I watched a clip of him talking about the Steelers pick with um, Mike Florio, and he had a lot of good things to say about the pick, so that's odd. Here's the thing. In the podcast, he has a lot of good things to say about Kenny Pickett. Yeah. (laughs) He just says that he's 39th, and I'm just like, that doesn't make any sense to me. I think it's Kenny Pickett factor. But even so, you go through this list, and you the more you look at it, the more ridiculous it absolutely is. The Bears, as the 32nd team in the NFL, I'm sorry. But I get that they've done absolutely nothing to help a quarterback out, and Justin Fields deserves way better. But Justin Fields is going to win you enough games to not be the last team in the NFL. Meanwhile, the Jets, if you look at their schedule, could easily go, oh, they play the whole AFC North the four, the first four weeks of the season. You could go 0 oh, 4 right there. They're, the Jets could go 0 oh, 9 before the bye. Terrible. Houston Texans, I didn't even realize that they're still a football team. Forgot we were still talking about them. And then the Atlanta Falcons. Atlanta Falcons, above all those, is mind blowing. Mind yeah. Blowing. Um, somebody, I think it was uh, Black and Yellow that pointed out the Bengals were a 16th fresh off of a Super Bowl appearance and nearly winning the Super Bowl. And only getting I don't better. Feel like they got, yeah, I don't feel like they got drastically worse over the offseason. Dude, I'm telling you right now. The Cardinals at number nine, they're going to disappoint a lot of people next year. They are not going to be that good of a football team, I'm telling you. I think that a lot of teams on this list are going to disappoint. I mean, the Green Bay Packers at two. Name one other player on the Green Bay Packers besides Aaron Rodgers. (laughs) Go ahead. You can't. Uh, Go ahead. Name a wide receiver. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Jones, A.J. Dillon. um, Yep. 
David Bukaki or whatever. <laughs> whatever his name is. Bakhtiari. Bakhtiari. Same thing. <laughs> I just oh, don't. There's shit, no. Man. Like the Packers being number two. Absolutely ridiculous. I just think the entire list is bad. Jair Alexander, who just got paid yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very true. Very I, do, true. I, I think the Packers are good, man. I, I don't know about number two in the NFL, but I think the Packers are good. Yeah, um, they're good. The Ravens number two, different things. at number 11. Bro, I, I think they had a solid draft in getting like Hamilton and Linderbaum. Um, I'm not sure the exact impact that both of those guys will have right away. But, like, how are you going to put the Ravens at number 11? I don't think they got significantly better over the offseason, at least, like, heading into the NFL draft. And we're, we're talking about the Steelers team who swept them last year. Swept them. And, yeah, swept and I get the Lamar Jackson factor. He was injured. But the Ravens, in my opinion, outside of the NFL draft, did not get that much better. Now, granted, in the NFL draft, they got much better. But that's a bunch of rookies. You're not banking on a bunch of rookies – to carry this team if you are the pittsburgh steelers are not 26th they're much higher because they got good rookies so i don't know that's that's bad yeah. that's bad what do you think the ceiling is for the pittsburgh steelers where do you think their um, ceiling in a power ranking would be probably like like preseason yeah yeah like no injuries We'll just say no injuries, and we'll act as if Stefan Tuitt is back. I think Tuitt's presence definitely helps out a lot. Um, like I said, like it, it's really hard for me right now to 100% buy that they're a playoff team, so I would probably put them right around that like 15 mark, somewhere around there, j- just depending on like where I'm aligning up other teams and all that good stuff. Um, I, I don't hate the roster, you know, I, 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 yeah. I don't think they're going to be some like four or five win team. Like a, a lot of people at ESPN apparently think they're going to be. What is your preseason record for like preseason games? Let's just go pre or, or, or just season. like predicting the record. Yeah, before. let's go. Okay. I was like, I, I'm, uh... I don't even know <laughs> what the preseason games are. <laughs> um, I would say realistically for B, I'm looking at like probably like nine or 10 wins for, for the Steelers. And that's assuming that Trubisky or Pickett is able to just go in the offense and not force anything and play a really decent game in role like the Steelers need them to be. Yeah. Uh, because if, if either Trubisky or Pickett try to do too much, like it's just going to result in the same quarterback play that we saw last year. Yeah, I... I could agree with that one. I, me and Derek went through the whole schedule, and I think we came up with nine wins. Yeah, it was, seemed like, realistic. nine seems like that sweet spot too. Like last year, wasn't there over under set at eight and a half? Yeah, yeah. We, yep. uh, I think there. Yeah, it wasn't because you cashed in on it, didn't you? I did. I, did win I believe you did, and I believe it was eight and a half, uh, which could have screwed a lot of people because of the tie. Obviously, I oh, think that. Dude. Oh man, I forgot about the tie. You forgot about the tie to the Lions. Okay. To with the Mason Lions. Rudolph starting, yeah. With Mason was, Rudolph. Imagine how something. many ties there would be if Mason Rudolph played this whole season. A lot of ties. <laughs> a lot of ties. All right. I think oh, that man. their target, that their uh, ceiling, excuse me, I don't know. I, I, I feel like 15 is a good number. I don't see them much higher than that. I think that they have potential, you know. I think that the quarterback play, I think the offensive line play means everything. I think if the Steelers yeah. have – a solid offensive line, and we see immediate improvement. And I'm get, I'm doubting that. Great segue, by the way. Yeah, good segue. True. Yeah. I'm look at. I'm not catching anything today, but I'm who killing it. I uh, I think that if they have a good offensive line, a much better offensive line than they did last season, they could be a very good football team. Mm-hmm. There was, I think, a lot of the defensive holes came with how bad the offense was. And I think a lot of that gets fixed with a good offensive line. I don't know how good that offensive line is going to be. A lot of question marks. Yeah. But if it improves, they can improve with it. And I think that 15 mark could raise. But I think 15 is a good starting ground right here. Yep. And I think I personally think that nine or ten wins could get you into the playoffs in the AFC. Does that – I mean, it's way too early to start talking about that stuff. But it 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 could it could happen. It could happen. All 